Hello everyone, this is Terry from Genki Gaming TV, and we're back with episode 31 of Yokai Watch 2019. Holy snot, we have made it this far. I am shocked as much as you guys are. This episode I have really mixed feelings about. I liked it up until the end. The end ruins everything. Literally everything. It could it should have just been those first two segments. And even the stupid coma forge hand. Or four com or four coma. And it would have still been a good episode. Then then they ruined it. We're getting into that right now. I wanna thank you guys for the support first. But the opening segment was actually really well thought out and well polished. It actually focuses on one particular yokai, which I believe is Otodoshi of the Eerie Tribe, or Harium Scarium. And I like this yokai a lot. It's a very interesting one if you know the lore behind it, which after Yorochi and Fubukihime, I might have to do this yokai's origin slash lore. But we're ignoring that for now. Basically, Kate Kuhn, Nate, was being scared by all of his friends going, Gyaaah! Gyaaah! Causing him to freak out. I'd be freaking out too if I turned around to talk to Katie Fumi-chan and she went, Gyaaah! And it was a really weird, scary, Gyaaah! Because Gyaaah! And Gyaaah! I've already said Gya way too many times, so we're moving on. And the episode reaches its little bit of a middle point for this first segment when they discuss how can we help you with Harium Scarium, basically figuring out a way to help improve the situation because Harium Scarium doesn't want to really scare people. Just kind of wants to hang out and actually be a part of the cast. Actually wants to be around people. So, with that in mind, Nate summons multiple strong yokai that he knew he would not be freaked out by when they went gya. Whisper, of course, overdid every gya in the book. G Jibanyan's face being altered into being kind of scary was actually kind of neat because it was slightly reminiscent of his shadow side, light side form. A little bit, but it's not nearly as well developed in that darker art style. But still, it was a middle step in that direction and it looked really neat. But Vinoct was summoned. Our boy Manjimut was summoned, Komasan, Komajiro, Kewpie? Yeah. Uh, I think that's who that is because I know it's not the other yokai that you used to befriend stuff because of friendship is magic ability. But moving on, everyone has their freak out moment. Nate is okay with it. All of a sudden, the wonderful and glorious Hanako-san shows up and she's like, Harium Scarium, I can make you an idol star and make everyone love you. And, show, and so she does. She takes Harium Scarium and the rest of the gang to her yokai idol agency. She gives Harium Scarium a makeover, making Harium Scarium look idol-tastic. And thusly saves the day, but Harium Scarium's inspiriting magic becomes idle pop star poppy poppy k poppy j poppy themed. As everyone, with the exception of Nate, got a new outfit of sorts. Everyone's art style changed and was altered a little bit. And it was kind of magical in all of the right ways. But. We're moving a little bit forward with it. We transition onto the Savari section of everything, well, of the episode. 
and we basically have our cast, our Whisper, our Jibanyan, and our Kate the Coon, and they work together to go on another safari like they did for Okami Nyan. And even though everything is in Yan except for Usapi Yan, which Usapi Yan shows up several times, they're looking for the mysterious Silver Nyan, which is actually Silverfish Nyan. But not exactly, but you, you guys get the valid point of this. This part transitions a little bit differently because we get introduced to a yokai that both breathes water and air. So when the fish part starts talking, it realizes that it's drowning in air and has to go back into the water and then the cat part starts to drown legitimately. So Usapion is the only one that's realizing any of this is truly going on and he's panicking trying to save the, the Nyan part of Silverfish and Nyan, but isn't able to truly convince Kei de Kun, Jiba Nyan, or Whisper about it until it's almost too late, until they're like pushing on the cat's belly and just trying to get the water out of him. We get a flashback of how Silver Nyan drowned in, in the air at the supermarket. But he's still okay with going to the supermarket because of how binly or how convenient it is. So this this is kind of a different situation and Usabion is the only smart person in the segment of this episode. Usapion for life, guys. Usapion and Black Diamond Yon. By far, the two most useful yokai other than Jibanyan and his frog raincoat. Those are the only things I, I like about the series thus far. Like, those are my favorite moments. Other than the Roadrunner parody stuff and the Wat and the Nyanking Dead stuff. And, like, the Idol spinoff, because that was kind of funny, too. But this ends up with Nate summoning the great and powerful Shogun Yan or Bushin Yan and telling Bushin Yan, cut that fish off that cat said. They'll be happier separated. Nope, he completely kills him. And everyone's all wide eyed and surprised that a samurai would kill a fish and another cat yokai. I guess I'm gonna have to do the other Nyan origins. Like, I'm gonna have to do Okami Nyan, I'm gonna have to do Silver Nyan. Like, get the origins of these. Their videos would be extremely short, like maybe five minutes, because it only takes about that long to explain what exactly they are and what caused it. But, that segment was pretty good. Usopion being all angsty and annoyed with the fish during the opening parts of the segment, wanting to go invader mode and like massacre the fish with his laser. Luckily, Whisper stops him. But transitioning on to the great Inma battle ring where we have Fudo Mio versus Komakasan or Kachan. This is by far the the dumbest closing segment I think I've ever seen in a anime show period. Kamakasan beats Fudomyo. What are you even thinking, level five? Fudomyo should have just knocked her off the stage causing a ring out, or she should have ringed him out, causing him to like pass out as Fudomyo boy. That would have been better than her rocking Fudomio boy to sleep in her fat, or on her, her puny puniness. Yeah, that's a little bit better wording to use in this situation. It was cool seeing Fudomio, but Fudomio has become Fudomio fodder. 
Because in a world where Komakanchan kicks your butt and causes you to go back to your your kid farm, it's not a world I want to live in, yokai watch wise. After I saw that, I'm like, episode just went from an A to a a C very quickly, and then after this, we we get a preview for the old man wig club movie. Level 5, Anime Studio, people working on this project, stop with the old man wig club stuff, it's just not funny, you may think it's hilarious, but I can tell you that even the younger part of the audience thinks it's so stupid, which is why they are the ones laughing at it, but for uh, your audience, probably, I want to say 12 to... I'm going to say 12 to 30. This is one of the dumbest segments you could have ever created. And, like, I, I can admit Komakachan beating Fudomiyo was funny. It would have been played out a little bit better had it been, had this have actually been done when Fudomiyo was relevant. It could have been interesting then. But right now... No, it's not relevant. It didn't play out well. Fudomiyo should... It should have just been a massive ring out where Fudomiyo and Komakachan destroyed the ring itself. Because I guess if you don't pay, play Wibwob or... Well, Wibwob is dead. Puni Puni. Then you don't know how strong Komakachan actually is. And since I don't play Puni Puni... Who knew that Komakachan was god tier? Because Fudomiyo's god tier, probably. But yeah, the episode was okay up until the end. Even Nate, Whisper, and Jabanyan agree. All in all, the episode was worth watching. It's just, there's certain things about it that I would have changed. And that kind of frustrate me as a viewer to know that... The anime studio and level 5 and whoever's writing this are still kind of not understanding what we want. Hopefully Y Academy is so much better than this and this gets its proper end date. Because Y Academy should at least be a little bit good. Hopefully it's more action oriented than comedy oriented. But that has truly been it for this episode review. If you guys want to support me at all, you can use my Streamlab link to donate. I am not forcing you to do that. I will tell you what any donations are going to be used for. Right now, I'd like to upgrade to an actual microphone that is in a laptop mic. That is what I would use any donations for. I would get a... I guess it's a blue snowball or a blue Yeti mic so that the audio quality would at least be a tiny bit better for you. But you don't have to do it. I'm not forcing you to do it at all. It's just there just in case you feel like helping out the channel. Like always, stay positive. May blessings come your way and may your week that's coming up be amazing and full of happiness and positivity and goodness. I've been Terry with Genki Gaming TV. Have a great rest of your morning, afternoon, and or evening. Bye-bye.